Hello friends, welcome to today's session of chemistry. As you all know, we have started with the seventh lesson of your syllabus, that is elements of group 16, 17 and 18. We call them P-block elements. In the last session, we learned about the concept of allotropy. We learned about allotropes of sulfur and all the members of group 16. We also learn about the oxoacids of sulfur and halogens. We learn about their names, formula and structures of all the oxoacids. It is somewhat critical to remember all these structures, but those are important as far as exam is concerned. Hence, try to draw the structures and practice them. Those that practice will help you to remember the structures. Okay. In today's session, we are going to learn about oxygen and compounds of oxygen. Oxygen that is the first member of 16th group. Now, we are going to learn about the methods of preparation of oxygen, its physical properties, chemical reactions and uses. Also, we are going to learn about one more concept that is Oxides, oxides, simple oxides and their classification. So let us start. We are going to start with the methods of preparation of dioxygen. Nowadays, oxygen is called dioxygen as it contains two oxygen atoms and the formula is O2. Now, methods of preparation contain three different methods. First is laboratory method. Second is electrolysis and third is industrial method. Now, start with laboratory methods. There are three different ways by which we can prepare oxygen in laboratory. First is by heating oxygen containing salts, which are those such as chlorates, nitrates, permanganates, all of them contain oxygen. Hence, if we heat these salts, they will give you oxygen. For example, suppose we heat potassium chlorate along with some catalyst like MnO2, it will give you oxygen along with potassium chloride. So this is first laboratory method. Now second laboratory method is thermal decomposition of oxides of metals. Oxides of metal that means metal oxides, combination of oxygen and metal. If we carry out thermal decomposition. Thermal is heating, decomposition is separation. So if we heat these oxides of metal, they will be separated into oxygen and metal. Let us consider some examples. For example, silver oxide. If it is heated, it will give you oxygen along with silver. So it is decomposition. Secondly, Mercury oxide will give you mercury and oxygen. Lead oxide will also give you oxygen. So this is second laboratory method. One more laboratory method is available and that is a decomposition of hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide on heating in presence of catalysts such as finely divided metal and manganese dioxide will give you oxygen along with water. So catalyst is needed. So this is third method of preparation of oxygen in laboratory. Second method is electrolysis. Electrolysis, as the name suggests, lysis is breaking. So breaking in presence of or by using electricity is called electrolysis. That needs one device called as electrolytic cell. It has two electrodes, anode, and cathode, which are connected to an external source of electricity. And that electrolytic cell contains an electrolyte. To prepare oxygen, we are going to take water as an electrolyte. When an electricity is applied, then hydrogen is liberated at cathode and oxygen at anode. The reaction is like this. On electrolysis, we get H2O or water separated into hydrogen and oxygen. Hydrogen 
being positively charged gets liberated at cathode which is negatively charged oxygen being negatively charged gets liberated at oxygen uh, at anode which is positively charged electrode hence we get oxygen in a large scale if we electrolyze water which is a cheap source available so on large scale preparation we can carry out electrolysis or industrially again on the large scale oxygen can be separated from air the method is carried out like this first step is a removal of carbon dioxide and water vapor from air air it is first separated from co2 and water vapor then the remaining air is liquefied that is converted into liquid state now fractional distillation of this liquid air is carried out fractional distillation we learned last year that is separation and purification of any liquid is carried out by this method now liquefied air contains a large proportion of dinitrogen followed by dioxygen now along with dioxygen we get dinitrogen as a by product as air is available in tremendous amount it is a very cheap source a raw material needed for industry and it has tremendous application so this is the industrial method used for preparation of oxygen now we will see the physical properties of oxygen first one dioxygen is colorless and odorless gas as you all know secondly dioxygen is sparingly soluble in water sparingly means very less soluble in water still that much amount of dissolved oxygen is sufficient to sustain marine and aquatic life as you all know oxygen or the life on earth is because of oxygen so this is second physical property third one it's liquefy or it can be liquefied at 90 kelvin below 0 to 73 kelvin is zero so minus temperature is needed because gaseous state is converted into liquid state and it freezes or gets converted to solid state at 55 kelvin it has three isotopes 16 17 18 <laughs> molecular oxygen exhibits paramagnetism paramagnetism that means oxygen is attracted in magnetic field at it has unpaired electrons in the last shell hence it exhibits paramagnetism now next point we are going to consider is chemical properties as you know oxygen is very active element so it reacts almost with all metals non metals as well as some compounds like organic compound and other compounds as well we will consider one by one so first is reaction with metals dioxygen directly reacts with almost all metals except gold and platinum to form their oxides so let us consider some examples like calcium reacts with oxygen to give calcium oxide aluminum will give you aluminum oxide like magnesium will give magnesium oxide so it reacts with almost all metals to give metal oxides secondly reaction with non metals except noble gases dioxygen reacts almost with all non metals to form their oxides let us consider some examples like carbon will give you carbon dioxide phosphorus will give you phosphorus oxide sulfur will give you sulfur oxide like that so it will react with all non metals to form their oxides now some general compounds reaction with some general compounds if we consider such as zinc sulfide will give you zinc oxide along with the liberation of sulfur dioxide so alkenes or organic compounds these are hydrocarbons they undergo combustion reaction to form co2 and h2 what is combustion burning in presence of oxygen is called 
combustion. And all hydrocarbons on combustion give these two compounds, that is carbon dioxide and water, along with tremendous amount of energy. Hence, hydrocarbons are used as fuels. One more example, sulfur dioxide can be converted into sulfur trioxide by oxidation in presence of V2O5, that is vanadium pentoxide. So these are the chemical properties of oxygen. Now we will consider uses of oxygen. As you all know, life on earth is because of oxygen. Oxygen has a tremendous application. We will see one by one. First one, it is the important source for respiration or to sustain animal and aquatic life on earth. Secondly, it is used in the manufacture of steel, industrial application. It is used in oxyacetylene flame for welding and cutting of metals. What is oxyacetylene flame? Last year we have studied in alkyne cities. Oxyacetylene is the combination of oxygen with acetylene, again a hydrocarbon. So these two come together to form oxyacetylene flame which achieves temperature above 3000 degrees Celsius. So it is used for welding and cutting of metals. So this is third use. Next one, oxygen cylinders have wide application in hospital as well as in high altitude flying where there is oxygen percentage low and in mountaining also oxygen cylinders are used. So wide application. Nowadays, you all are aware of that. COVID-19 patients where the oxygen content becomes less than those patients are treated with oxygen cylinders. So it has tremendous applications. It is used in combustion of fuels, that is burning of hydrocarbons. The reaction is known as combustion and those are used as fuels. For example, hydrazine which is present in liquid oxygen. When it is burned, it provides tremendous energy in rockets. So these are the uses of oxygen. So this is all about dioxygen. Its methods of preparation we learn. We also consider its physical properties, chemical reactivity, chemical reactions and uses. Try to remember the reactions, particularly because they need practice. So write down the reactions in your notebook and practice them. Now, the next concept you are going to learn about is simple oxides. What is mean by oxide? It is a binary compound of oxygen with another element is called an oxide. As the name suggests, binary means two elements. If they come together and one of them is oxygen, then it is called oxide. So simple oxides are the binary compounds of oxygen with another element. They are classified into four different types, such as acidic oxides, basic oxides, ampoderic oxides, and neutral oxides. We will see one by one. First one is acidic oxide. Definition. An oxide which dissolves in water to give an acid, or if it reacts with base to give a salt, it is called acidic oxide. There are two, two criteria we can apply to consider that compound as acidic oxide. So some examples are like this, sulfur dioxide, trioxide, carbon dioxide, nitrogen oxide, etc. Now, we will consider the reactions. Now, if sulfur dioxide, when it is dissolved in water, it gives an acid, sulfurous acid. Hence, it is acidic oxide. Or sulfur trioxide, when it is treated with base, it gives salt and water. Our concept of neutralization tells us that acid and base react to give salt and water. As with base, it gives salt and water. That means it must be acid. Hence, it is acidic oxide. Generally, the oxides of non-metals are acidic oxides. Like sulfur, carbon, nitrogen, halogens are non-metals. Hence, their oxides are acidic oxides. Now, second type, that is basic oxide. Definition, an oxide which dissolves in water to give a base or reacts with an acid to give salt is called basic oxide. 
For example, sodium oxide, calcium oxide, barium oxide, etc. are basic oxide. Let us consider the reactions. Now, calcium oxide, when treated with water, it will give you calcium hydroxide, same way Na2O, that is sodium oxide, will give you sodium hydroxide. So, the one which dissolves in water to give a base is called basic oxide. Hence, calcium oxide is basic oxide. Or another criteria is, if it gives salt and water with acid, then it must be a basic oxide. So, we get barium oxide with water, we get barium chloride and water. That means it is a neutralization reaction which proves that barium oxide is a basic oxide. Generally, oxides of metals are basic oxide. Sodium, calcium, barium are metals. Their oxides are generally basic oxides. Now, third type. It is somewhat different. Amphoteric oxide. The oxides which react with base as well as acid to give salt are called as amphoteric oxides. For example, aluminum oxide is amphoteric oxide. We will consider the reaction. Now, this is the reaction. Aluminum oxide, when treated with base, that is sodium hydroxide, gives Na3ALOH6 a salt. Sodium hexahydroxoaluminate it is. So, with base, it gives salt, that means it is acidic. When aluminum oxide is treated with acid, it gives these two ions. If they combine, they form AlCl3 as a salt along with water. But in water, they are converted into ions. But it is a salt. So, again it gives salt with acid, that means it is a basic oxide. Such type of oxides, which are acidic as well as basic, they are called amphoteric oxide. There is one more type, which is neutral oxides. Which are neutral oxides then? The oxides which are neither acidic nor basic are called as neutral oxides. Examples are carbon monoxide, nitric oxide, dinitrogen oxide, etc. are neither acidic nor basic. Hence, they are called as neutral oxide. So, this is all about in today's session. Now, time for assignment. So, as I told you, write down all the reactions of oxygen that includes preparation methods of oxygen, their reactions, and chemical reactions, that means reaction with metals, non-metals, and with some general compounds. As well as, write down the physical properties and uses of oxygen. Next question will be, write down the oxides, its definition and classification along with their examples. So, you have to write a lot in today's session, but that will be as if notes for this lesson and which are very important as far as exam is concerned. So, thank you.